The story is told that in the early 1900s, the Times of London posed this question to several prominent authors. What's wrong with the world today? Well-known author G.K. Chesterton is said to have responded with a one-sentence essay. Dear Sir, I am sincerely yours, G.K. Chesterton. That story came to mind as I pondered this line from the Lord's Prayer on earth as it is in heaven. As I reflected on those seven words, on earth as it is in heaven, I realized that they're an almost perfect summary of the Christian faith. That phrase, on earth as it is in heaven, points us towards the answers for three crucial questions that, when answered, sum up everything we need to know about what it means to believe in the Christian worldview. Those questions are, why did God send Jesus? What does Jesus want to do in us? And what does Jesus want to do through us? But before we explore the questions one by one, let's pause and pray together. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and open our eyes so that we may see. Open our ears so that we may hear. Open our minds so that we may understand. And open our hearts so that we may receive whatever it is that you have for us today. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. First question. Why did God send Jesus to us? To help us answer that question, let me ask another. Are things in the world the way they are supposed to be? What do you think, yes or no? Well, it's pretty obvious the answer is no. A quick glance at the newspaper any day of the week, and what do you see? Tales of crime, corruption, violence, injustice, immorality, poverty, environmental destruction. Now and again, every one of us ask ourselves the same question the editors of the Times of London asked G.K. Chesterton. What is wrong with the world? Deep down, we all know that things are not the way they're supposed to be. When we look at the Bible story of creation in Genesis 1, that we see that God repeatedly calls creation good. In the Christian worldview, world God created a good and wonderful world. In the beginning, everything was right with everything else. On a bigger level, creation was designed to take care of us, and we were designed to take care of creation. We're made to be interdependent with one another. On a relational level, people were designed to take care of each other. God created us to live in authentic community with one another with freedom to love and be loved, to serve and to serve, to be ourselves with one another, to fully be ourselves with one another without shame or embarrassment or guilt. And most importantly, we're each designed to be in relationship with God, a relationship full of love and intimacy, a relationship where we experience God's presence in our lives. That's how the Bible tells us God intended the world to be. Is it like that today? Sadly, no. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're acknowledging that there is a gap between how things are and how God wants them to be, how God created them to be. So what happened? Well, Genesis chapters 2 through 10 is the Bible's answer to what is wrong with the world. In those chapters, we read the story of Adam and Eve, the fall, and the introduction of evil into God's good creation, and the chaos and destruction evil do to everything that God has made so good. The Bible says that when God placed Adam and Eve in the garden, God provided everything they needed and only placed one boundary on their freedom. God said, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now, you already know what happened. 
Adam and Eve are just like us. Part of the human condition is that we often rebel when we sense there are limitations being placed on our freedom and autonomy. Limitations on doing what we want to do. When we're honest with ourselves, we can acknowledge that no matter how old we may be, we are all at times rebellious teenagers saying, you're not the boss of me. Adam and Eve disregarded God's command and the result was the fall. The introduction of sin and destructive power of evil into the world. And the result was a damaged, we damaged creation. We're part of systems that drain the planet of its resources and fills it with pollutants so that we can live in comfort and ease. But there are other issues as well, such as racism, sexism, slavery, corruption, injustice, oppression, all the ways that damage our world. On a relational level, <clears throat> we damage each other and others hurt us, whether we mean to or not. When we live for ourselves, it's easy to use other people for selfish purposes, resulting in broken relationships. And saddest of all, we damage our relationship with God. We and the whole world are damaged by evil. We're all contributing to the mess. A good question to spend some time thinking about is this. Where have you seen the damage of sin in your own life or in the lives of people around you? When G.K. Chesterton responded to the inquiry, what is wrong with the world? With those two words, I am, he was acknowledging the ways he could see the damage of evil and sin in his own life and the ways he contributed to the pain in other people's lives. The good news is that despite the pain and despite the damage, God still loves the world. Remember the first of our three questions, why did God send Jesus to us? God sent Jesus to rescue us from sin and death's evil and destructive power and to start a resistance movement against evil, though not through the course of use of force or communal escapism. God sent us Jesus to teach us a better way to live and to give us the power to overcome evil in us and around us. That's the answer to the second question that we have for, this, for today. What does Jesus want to do in us? Jesus wants to set us free from the power of sin and death. And the way he does that is through the cross. Through his death on the cross, Jesus draws all the power of sin and evil into himself and destroys them through the power of his resurrection. When we place our faith in Jesus, he gives the power of his resurrection to us. And that power allows us to overcome the selfishness and damage in us and in the world. Jesus restores us for God's original purpose for our lives, to reflect God's image and likeness to the world. That brings us to our third question. What does Jesus want to do through us? Jesus saves us so that we can become missionaries, people who join in God's rescue mission of the world. We become missionaries for Jesus who use the unique gifts and talents and skills God has placed within each and every one of us so that we can evangelize and witness God's love to the world. No matter who you are, God has a role for you to play in the healing of creation. It could be that your role is using your gifts to help our church offer radical hospitality to everyone who visits our campus. Or maybe it's that God has placed in your heart a burden for the environment and your calling is to help our community both at the church and, and in our city to find ways of living that are gentler on the earth. Or maybe that God wants to show use you to show God's love in tangible ways to the people you regularly run into in your everyday life. I don't know the particular way God is calling you to live as a missionary in the kingdom, but I know that if you sincerely ask, God will answer. When, when we pray on earth as it is in heaven, we acknowledge the gap 
between how things are and how God desires them to be, both in the world as a whole and in our own personal lives. And at the exact same time, we're praying for God to close the gap in our personal life and then listening for the Spirit's leading so that God can use us to help close that gap in the world. And that gap begins to close when we accept Jesus' invitation to bring all our guilt, all our grief, all our shame, all of our pain to him and to surrender ourselves to him. I, I wonder if you might sense the Spirit leading you to do this right now whether it's for the first time or a recommitment of your life. I invite you right where you are, wherever you are. Turn your palms up in your lap. Take a few easy, gentle breaths. To close your eyes and pray. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that things are not the way they're supposed to be in the world. They're not the way they're supposed to be in my life. Through my own selfishness, I've hurt others. And I've hurt myself. I'm genuinely sorry. And I humbly repent. Free me from the power of sin and death. And fill me with your spirit. So that I may joyfully live as your disciple. And witness your love to the world. Lord Jesus, receive my prayer and help me to know what you want to do through me to help things on earth be a little bit more like they are in heaven. Amen.